Hey, Karen. <laughs> How are you? I am doing wonderful. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm excited for this. My brother has the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, yes. It's um, it's great. And, and I'm going to interview Derek later on as well. So it's going to be good to talk to him about his film stuff, but it's going to be great. Oh, cool. Okay. Talking to you. Yes. Um, I actually thought you were out in, 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 in LA. So when he set up the time, I thought, oh, that'll be so late. Then he clarified that you're out oh, in no. the East Coast. <laughs> right. No, yeah. I'm. We moved, uh, We what about, I don't know, seven years? Six years ago. Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. Everybody's in Atlanta, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. It wasn't said, a... Yeah, I said I was going to embrace it. Embrace it. <laughs> embrace it to the fullest, right? The culture is definitely in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pity you guys um, don't have Hezekiah. Uh, what a, a, is it? Hezekiah Walker? Is that is a Herschel Walker? Is that him? Oh, oh, you're talking about the um, the, the mayor. Was it the, the Senate? I mean, the senator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no, we don't. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, what a pity. What a pity. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me, let me know when you're ready. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, okay. Well, Karen, it is a, a great honor to be able to speak with you. Um, I've um, followed your career. When I actually, um, I, you know, I'm here, here in England, I was born and raised here, but I went to high school in Nigeria. And um, it's wow. amazing how during the 80s, um, how big you were in Nigeria. So I know you go to South Africa quite a bit, but you were global. And, and I think sometimes when I speak to a lot of my guests, they don't recognize or realize that they transcended more than America and Europe, but they actually came to Nigeria and the rest of the world. So, you know, it's going to be an honor just listening and hearing your journey and everything. Um, yes, and uh, <laughs> you know I haven't been to Nigeria yet, so I'm hoping this year we'll be doing you know a full uh, tour of Africa. Um, just been you know South Africa, like we talked about, and um, yes, and got uh, Uganda. So okay, yeah, we're gonna be venturing out, and uh, we'll talk about my beloved South Africa. <laughs> yes, yes, we, we 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 will, we will. But we have an international audience, and people all over the world tune in. And it'd be oh, you start off asking where you were born and raised. Born and raised in South Central. Wow. But now they say don't call it South Central, but Los Angeles. Um, and um, yeah, very. Uh, you know, it's 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 a a place. I wouldn't say it's. I lived in Inglewood when I graduated. Mm -hmm. From high school with my dad but the other we used to call it south central and um yeah just a meager meager beginnings humble beginnings and um beautiful parents family i'm the baby of the family and um i was a whippersnapper <laughs> oh, what's a what's a whippersnapper this whippersnapper is a, a one that is just destined, you know, to do something. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. You can't hold her down. She's a whip. She's going. She's going. Uh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And you're like, what's a whippersnapper? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have to clarify for the international audience. Oh, yeah, that's that southern, you know, my parents are from the south. So from uh, Texas. <laughs> oh, now, you know, a lot of us would, would hear about South Central LA and 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 it got more um, LA got but now uh, more sort of advertised when sort of gangster rap came out. So you say Inglewood. Oh, initially then we think about, um, oh, um, oh, goodness. Um, NWA. Yeah. Well, well, we, yeah. yeah um, Mac 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, no, not you're doing all the wrong ones. Mac 10 is Inglewood. Um, uh, what's my name? Yeah. Mac 10 is from Inglewood. Yeah, so then Snoop from LA, F from Long Beach, and Dre's from Crump Compton. So that's how, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, how was growing I, I, up? Yeah, I actually grew up in, 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 in uh, but I went to school in Westchester. So I, w I went out of my school district. I, okay. I lied and used someone's address so I can wow. get into a better school district. And <laughs> that is so crazy because, like, 
I can't believe I got away with it. So, um, but yeah, I did. And so it was, it was amazing growing up in Los Angeles because it was the city of dreams and you had the sunshine every day. Um, you had, you know, just like I said, people were there, they were dreamers and they wanted to be somebody and the sun was there to make us all feel good and happy and like we could achieve it and the beach and, um, it's, it was definitely a beautiful experience growing up in Los Angeles and um, just being around, having access to Hollywood and, you know, to pageants and it's just how, you know, acting and singing and dancing. And so I, I wouldn't trade my childhood for anything. It was amazing. At, at that young age, I mean, and I, and I do wonder the disparity about those who, grew up in, 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 in LA and for others who come into LA to chase the dream. And then those of you who grew up in say South Central or, or on stuff, could you talk about seeing the dream? I, but I don't know if that was very common with others who grew up in say South Central and others, could they see Hollywood as accessible the same way you seem to talk about it? Yes, because you know, you had, especially if you, with me being a, you know, in my teenage years doing pageants and, you know, we'd have to go on auditions and you, there was a, a, what was that called? It was a paper. It was called drama log, I believe. And, you know, there would be, uh, you know, where you can audition and casting call there. So, uh, you know, that was pretty much where we looked to, to audition for, you know, things outside of South Central. And there would be sometimes little fake pop-ups that, yeah. you know, they would try to come there to take your money, right? Get into Hollywood, you know, come to Inglewood. You know, the people all are wrapped around and, you know, they would just try to charge you for pictures or lessons. But yeah, I just, um, it's just the, the, the spiritual the aspect of just, like I said, just LA being such a, a place that the energy mm -hmm. of the, of the, of the um, California can just carry you. Because like I said, we're, you know, it's either you're going to go, like I said, in, in Atlanta, I mean, it's in Atlanta, it's a different culture. It's a different energy. So I think every city and even, you know, London, of course, you guys have that same rock and roll thing there. It's like, you're just, even like you, you know, you're walking down King's Road and, and, you know, you just see these ageless people that are just like rock and roll, you know, <laughs> forever, you know what I mean? And it's just like, wow, it's such a music place. So yeah. that's what I'm talking about, that energy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, used to, I, I lived in Redondo Beach for about two and a half years. and um, Oh, Redondo. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, yeah and how else and stuff. But how did, what about the singing part? Because um, being the youngest in the family, how did you pick that up? Oh, my God. I'm such a ham. Um, <laughs> you got to say, we'd be around, you know, the family. We'd have Thanksgiving, and I'm four years old, and course, you know, if you're most black families, after you finish eating, you know, you're put on the TV and in between the uh, TV shows, it's like, hey, you know, listen to me sing this song, you know, <laughs> I'm Dinah Ross, I'm Donna Summers, you know, and, oh. and, and, and they had to listen to me, you know what I mean? And then when I started doing this all the time, I was getting better and better. And I love the attention. I love performing. The microphone was my mic, and, and it was just a great time. My sister, Angie, who was my older sister, she had a natural gift to sing, and um, my my other sister was a choreographer and dancer. So, and then just they had older sisters and brothers, so they just had, always had good, great music in the house, you know what I'm saying? I wish it would have been more jazz. I'm like, why didn't you guys play Ella and, uh, you know, Sarah Vaughn, because I could have... <laughs> really put some of that in my vocals now that I'm older because I when I I used to teach voice lessons too when I was younger and when I was trying before I got signed by Warner Brothers but these influences I used to think like wow I wish that we would have played that in the house but it was it was definitely uh, that's how I started singing and then church of course okay mm -hmm. but, but who were your, your main musical in, um, influences in those early days where you sort of honed your voice oh yeah <laughs> Um, main influence was definitely Diana Ross because, you know, she's the boss, <laughs> she's international, 
you know, she's beautiful, she's elegant, Donna Summer, because she was sexy, she was, her sound was amazing, she was, you know, just a great, great vocal, um, so those two, and then Mel, of course, I like Michael Jackson, um, who else, Stevie Wonder, those were probably my strongest as a kid, and then Stephanie Mills and Gladys Knight and Phyllis Hyman. I went through that phase. Um, and then Al Jarreau. So there were there was different phases. And then, you know, Luther, there was just Cheryl Lynn, you know, Eve Evelyn Champagne King, um, Karen Carpenter. Um, so, you know, and that was the beauty of, of that time. Um, they were so different from one another, those voices. And that's what I missed because you had such a variety. They Dion Warwick, oh my God. <laughs> how can I not say Dion and Aretha? Yeah, so it was it was a buffet of, you know, <laughs> pick and choose and be influenced by, you know, Roberta Flack. So yeah, I, we had so much, right? We had we had was a smorgasbord of amazing artist mm -hmm. and i guess at that time there was more emphasis on the the voice and and, and, and less on the image right um, right at first yeah but then when it you know <clears throat> then i started to when it became when i was a teenager you know a prince and madonna just because of you know and, and janet of course you know because of the mtv the pop uh, uh definitely was influenced by Michael and, and that just the video artist, um, which I kind of pride myself on because being a dancer and a, an entertainer, I was attracted to, you know, those, a lot of those artists. And so probably Prince and Michael being my favorite. Uh, so it's interesting you mentioned dancing because then you, you, how did you then, did you leave the Hollywood side to then say, let me focus on the musical? What was the shift? Oh no, it, I went to a school like, um, do you remember the, the movie Fame at all where they had a yes, school? Yes, yes, I love that, yeah. Right, so I went to, in the. Um, I was so fortunate to have a um, program in the summer and all, and, and that we went to for underprivileged kids that we, we can learn acting, singing, dancing, tap, what was it? Uh, and uh, I think some musical instruments. And we would put on, it was called the Ebony Showcase Theater. And um, every year we would put, you know, put on an annual show. So you kind of had to be, you know, know how to do it all. And um, some very amazing talented people came out of the Ebony Showcase Theater. That, uh, so I, like I said, I, I just, I wasn't limber enough to dance. And then as a, I, I wanted to be, I, I understood it, but I just was, I didn't, I wasn't as limber as my sister and my friend. So I, I, that was a challenge for me as well as when I was, I'm going to go back a little bit. I used to be a track star. So I could have uh -huh. gone and gotten a scholarship. Yeah. I used to be very fast. I would run the, the hundred yard dash and the relay and the 220. And so uh -huh. I had record breaking times. Yeah. So I was a, I was a track star too. But um, I felt like I wanted to, I had to choose. So I, cause you know, it was such a commitment to, mm -hmm. to either one. So I, I chose um, the entertainment. Oh, why? Cause <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I kept getting uh, cramps in my leg. Okay. Uh, you know, there was times when I had, I had the race run and it was like for like a trophy for a championship and I would get a cramp and right at the last, right. You know, and I just was like, what is going on? I, you know, and I, I don't know why. So maybe that was just a sign, like, don't go that way. But, you know, and so I said, I just can't keep doing that. It was heartbreaking because I would have the race and lose it because of the cramp. Yeah. So all that work, you know what I mean? So yeah. and I couldn't figure out why, you know, why I was uh, doing that. But so that's what happened. You're bringing, you're taking me back because nobody ever asked me that question. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, it was why do I? It was the cramps. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and turn on your notification. But better still, check out our membership where you can get to watch these videos from day one, as well as our monthly meetings when we get to meet up and talk.
with myself and, and the rest of the people who are members, but also some exclusive interviews, which we don't get, I don't get to broadcast. But thanks for watching and hope to see you soon.